regular video that long one hour or two hours video but such an important topic which is about a nakshatra and this nakshatra deeply influences your love life it deeply influences the union the marriage the partnership so there are a lot of different parameters how to understand your marriage partnership how will be your partner how will you connect with this person how you will grow together so out of those all parameters there's this one thing which you really need to see some people might know about this and i know a lot of you don't know about this so let's talk about it so what do you usually look at in a horoscope to understand a partnership it is your seventh house, it is your seventh lord, it is your Dada Karaka, it's your Venus, in what sign your Venus is placed, what planets are aspecting the seventh house, what planets you have in seventh house. But apart from all of this, yeah, Dada Karaka, I think I've, I have missed this out. So, your Janma nakshatra and 11 nakshatras from that nakshatra count 11 nakshatras from your janma nakshatra and whatever that nakshatra is it will hold a great influence on your marriage i won't say it's positive or it is absolutely negative that nakshatra influences the prosperity in the relationship how your marriage will be so you need to take care of that now you may have a planet in the 11th nakshatra so wonderful do see what that planet is doing but for a lot of you you may have no planet in that 11th nakshatra from your janma nakshatra so now what you have to do is to see who is the planetary ruler of that nakshatra okay Suppose uh, 11th from your Janma nakshatra is suppose Ardhara nakshatra. So Ardhara is ruled by Rahu. So Rahu will have a deep influence on your love life, on your marriage, on your compatibility. Now see where Rahu is placed, in which house it's placed and uh, the Dasha of Rahu, any period of Rahu will impact the marriage in a positive in a negative both so we have to see how rahu is functioning in your chart as well so yes 11th from the janma nakshatra and before uh we will just you know have an example like how you can count it not just the 11th nakshatra um from your janma nakshatra but you can also focus on your 11th house 11th house is five places away from your seventh house and the five the fifth house is about productivity it is about intelligence it's about the fruits you carry with yourself the good and the bad you did in the result something which you will experience in this life a result of something so five places away from the seventh house which is your 11th house it does represent the expansion, the union, the the overall fulfillment which comes through the marriage, through that union. And of course, it is also about growth. So of course, when you get along with someone, that union also impacts you. Sometimes I have seen that the partnerships, the marriage doesn't bring any growth. Instead, it, bring, it brings a lot of losses. It brings challenges in the career so it adversely impacts the, the both people and then it is also something which brings so much of prosperity great opportunities and expansion so always see the 11th house 
which is five places from the seventh house this house the lord of this house the plan which is sitting there will also impact the growth in a positive or maybe in adverse uh, manner so yeah we are focusing on the nakshatra 11 places from your janma nakshatra we also call it as the vivaha nakshatra so let's understand uh, how can you count it so this is the list of uh, 27 nakshatras i hope the handwriting is clear to you <laughs> okay um how to count the 11th nakshatra so let's say that uh, your moon is in kritika over here so start from here number one moon and kritika one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so the the marriage nakshatra the 11th nakshatra from your janma nakshatra is hasta so moon and mercury will deeply influence your marriage your relationship with the partner let's do uh, one more example okay dhanashta hmm. so moon in dhanashta let's come from here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven ardhara so your janma nakshatra is dhanashta and the marriage nakshatra the vivaha nakshatra is ardhara so rahu plays a great role in your love life in your marriage you have to see where rahu is placed what is it promising what kind of uh, challenge it may bring for you so again rahu is significant which house is ruled by aquarius that house will be very significant with respect to relationship now you know how to calculate your marriage nakshatra but how can you analyze it how to reach to a certain prediction or understanding what will it do in your partnership there are two ways you can analyze this the first one is just focus on the planetary ruler of that nakshatra suppose your moon um, it's in punar vasu nakshatra so 11 places away would be anuradha anuradha nakshatra so moon in punarvasu and then your marriage nakshatra your vivaha nakshatra is anuradha now who is the lord of anuradha saturn okay so see where saturn is placed in your chart see what all houses are ruled by saturn suppose saturn rules uh, your 11th house or maybe it's in your 11th house this does show someone coming into your life who will uplift you who will maybe you know helping you in your career in some way saturn should be well placed and if saturn suppose you know gets into your eighth house okay despite of being very kind with this person despite of doing your best in the marriage there will always be uh, unexpected challenges or it could be the other person tries to dominate you okay or there is this certain coldness and um, there is not enough expression not enough uh, clarity in the relationship like the other person is not speaking out so if your uh, marriage nakshatra is anuradha then do see where Saturn is placed, all the houses are ruled by Saturn. And through that, you will get an idea. What could be my challenge? What could be uh, the blessing here? What could be the good thing I will experience through the partnership? So I'm just giving you examples. Like right now, I don't have any chart in my mind. Maybe uh, in the next video, we can um, look uh, deeply into uh, certain shards and how to analyze the partnerships how to analyze the marriage but today uh, just a bit of introduction and basic understanding and the second way how can you uh, understand your marriage nakshatra is compare it with your um, janma nakshatra suppose your moon is in magha 
All right. So for Magha, 11 places away from Magha will be Purva Ashar. Okay. So someone who have moon in Magha, you know, these people always end up doing more because they have this mindset of, I need to do more for my loved one. I have to do extra. I have to go beyond uh, because somewhere it becomes, um, it's not about ego. It's about the self-respect. It's about you being in a place where I have to provide. I have to be, I'm like this guardian and I have to do more. That could be the thing. No, it's not true for everyone. Again, Ketu, see where Ketu is placed. Because if the Ketu is not okay, it could be also someone who brings a lot of ego in the relationships. See the sun where it is. But in general, when, when I say moon and maga, I have seen people who, who do a lot. And um, so this is you who who might not be given a certain opportunity, but you feel this is my, sorry, uh, you, you're not given a certain responsibility, but still you feel, okay, this is my responsibility. I have to do it. But as the managed nakshatra is in Purva Ashar, you are someone who may be overdoing. You are someone whose self-respect is so important. You're very sensitive with that identity and that self-respect thing. And then with um, the Purva Shara Nakshatra influencing your marriage, it may bring connections, people, a relationship which moves so fast in your life. It just happens and just uh, goes away very instantly because the, the person you attract is someone who acts in a very impulsive manner in the matters of love like you're giving this person is happy and then when you you just stop doing or you do a bit less uh they're very quick to you know sense that so there's always this uh, push and pull as you know food shard is like that so it may bring partners who who don't know exactly what they want or their desire in the love uh, keeps on changing okay you may you may attract someone who is very pretty talented and and so on but the ability to stick to something and pursue it it's challenging for the other person now one more example let's say um moon in okay uh, i've been uh, doing a lot of charts for people who have moon in aquarius last three four months moon in shatbrisha moon in purva bhadra pada nakshatra so let's take purva bhadra pada maybe because of the sari sati <laughs> uh, yeah a lot of charts with uh, the moon in aquarius so suppose your moon is in purva bhadra pada nakshatra and um, 11 places away is the pushya fine now with the moon in purva bhadra pada you are a person who is deeply sensitive so there's a time when you show your vulnerable side and you're all joyful you're all nice and jolly and the second aspect of the Purva Bhadrapada is you don't come near to me or I'll just finish you don't come near to me I'll, I'll hurt you so there are two aspects to the Purva Bhadrapada but I think the, the the deepest need here is to have some kind of security and pusha is about security so um pusha pusha is ruled by saturn and of course there's there's influence of moon as well in the pusha so there is a need to be with someone who can be always soft towards you so pusha uh, shows that in the marriage partnership the security the the emotional compatibility the nourishment in that relationship is important will you get it or not that is decided by Saturn but that deep need of care is what the pushya as the marriage nakshatra indicates a person who can understand your needs 
a person who can uh, bring uh, a lot for you so that you feel secure but uh, I think with this placement also you have to learn to be very open to the world not like uh, touch me not plant even if a slight trigger makes you retreat uh, in the relationships so Pusha uh, if it's your marriage nakshatra it is about you know the marriages as such that every single day uh, your emotions will be tested how uh, strong you are emotionally that will be tested so that's it so you may get a secure place but then you have to outgrow and be open to face the world so pushra that's how uh, the marriage is the love is so this is how you're going to analyze uh, the marriage nakshatra i hope it's quite clear to you do see who is the lord of this nakshatra where it is placed what all houses it, it it's ruling so that will show the highs and the lows the good and the bad in the partnership and overall the growth how you're moving forward how this relationship will be sustained in the future because as i said 11 either it's your 11th house or it's uh 11th nakshatra from your moon nakshatra it is about that gradual growth you see and the fulfillment fulfillment is so important today people have everything yet they don't feel fulfilled and there are people who have nothing but still they know how to be happy to be more fulfilled so fulfillment is such a treasure and such a rare thing in this world so yeah this is how you're gonna see uh your marriage nakshatra and see you in the next video of course we'll be doing some examples like how to analyze uh, your marriage relationship how to understand what kind of a partner you're attracting so we'll do that in the next video